Hey, this is Jerry from Bliss Studio, and in this particular tutorial of the base game tutorial series, I'm gonna be working on setting up a ground unit that we can use and we can have it animate underneath of our character. And this is gonna be the base, and you can use this for all types of level generation. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so here we're back in Unity, and I need to give the character something to walk on. Now, I'm gonna do this really, really quickly, and the way I'm gonna do this is using Pro Builder. So I first need to install ProBuilder. So how do I get ProBuilder? I need to go ahead and click on the Package Manager. And then there, inside of the Package Manager, I'm gonna click on Unity Registry. ProBuilder is a free asset that you can go ahead and download. So I'm just gonna type in Pro. I'm gonna see that the versions that are there, I'm not gonna go ahead and use the verified version. I'm gonna use a higher level version. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the version 503 of ProBuilder. The other tool that I want to go ahead and download is the Pro Grids, which allows me to snap to specific grid points within the, the scene. So to get Pro Grids, at this point, we need to go ahead and go to Advanced Project Settings, and then we're going to Enable Preview Packages. So under the Project Settings, you can also get to this under Edit and then Project Settings. But we need to go ahead and enable Preview Packages. So let's go ahead and install that and then go back. You can see I have a few more options for some of the items in my package manager. One of those is ProGrids. So I'm gonna go ahead and select ProGrids and install that. ProGrids is installed as well. And both of those are located under Tools. So you'll see both ProGrids and ProBuilder. And so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my ProBuilder window and then I'm gonna go ahead and just dock this with my project. So these are the two windows I like to have over here, both project window and the Pro Builder window. And so I'm gonna go ahead and there's a couple different ways of making new shapes. I have a several videos over Pro Builder, so I'm not gonna really cover that. But in this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and just go and create a new game object. And I'm gonna do that here by right clicking in the hierarchy and clicking Pro Grid and then Cube. And then I want to go ahead and set this cube to be a little bit lower in the screen. And currently I have snapping turned on. So let's go ahead and turn that off real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a scale for this. So I want it to be fairly deep. And let's just choose maybe 10. Let's just go ahead and choose five as the Z depth. And then I need to also make it wider. So let's go ahead and take that a scale of maybe uh, five as well. And then I need to recenter it within the scene. And I think that works actually pretty good. So we'll go ahead and just move it back slightly. And then I also need to make sure that it's at a position that is at an even number. Okay, so currently it's at negative 1.6, but I'm gonna go ahead and just make this negative two, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and create a texture real quick to apply to this kind of road so we can make a prefab out of it. So I'm gonna go over to Photoshop and let's just go ahead and make it a road color. So let's just choose kind of a road color here. So I'll just choose a gray. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that. So Shift F5 in Photoshop, and I'm gonna fill with my foreground color. Okay, let's go ahead and put some road lines in here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a dashed yellow line in here. So let's go ahead and fill that. And then I'm gonna duplicate that down the page. Something like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a sprite. Now this is a 1024 by 1024 file, so that way we're staying within the power of two. And so let's go ahead and save this. I wanna save that into my project, but first I need to go ahead and create a sprites folder just cause I like to stay organized. So we'll go all this sprites. And then I wanna call this road.png. Okay, so we now have that uh, as part of our project. Now if I go back into Unity, it imports that. So I now have that, and I'm gonna create a material out of this sprite. So I'm gonna go to my materials folder and create a new material, and we'll call this road. So I'm gonna go into the sprites, take my road sprite, and then just drop it in the base map. 
Okay, so I now have that created. I need to go ahead and change this, the workflow from metallic to specular, and I'm gonna take the smoothness down so that way it's, it's more flat. So here you can see a preview, and it's currently previewing on a uh, sphere, but you see that the information is there. So let's go ahead and then take that, that material, that road material, and then I'm just gonna drag that right onto my cube. We now see the road. So let's just give this a play real quick just so we can see what that looks like. Yeah, there we go. So that works. Okay, so let's make this block of road move. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add a Playmaker FSM to this piece of road. Now, this is a great way for you to create moving objects if you want to have them be generated so that they're continually moving. And then you can create a generation point for where these are going to begin and then want them to move throughout space and have them move. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I have my road se segment selected. I'm gonna go ahead and add an FSM. And what I want to do is to move road. Okay, uh, that's just a name. All right, so we now that we have that, we need to go ahead and get the position of our game object. And we wanna get the position of the Z axis. So let's go ahead and get position. So here is get position and of the owner. So that's the road segment itself. We want to get the Z position right here. So I want to create a new variable and I'm going to call this Z position. And now we want to check that every frame. So if we go over to our variables, you can see that created a variable of a float type and currently it's at zero. But when we play the game, it's going to get the position of the game object. Okay, so if we try that real quick, we hit play, the road's not gonna move yet, but we can easily see that the position gets updated based off of the position of the game object. Okay, that's the first step. The next thing that we need to do is to go ahead and translate the, the game object. So let's go ahead and do a translate. And I'm gonna translate. And what is it we want to translate? Well, I want it to move towards the player. So, and that is a negative Z axis. So what I'm going to do is I want this to move off screen. So let's see how far that, that is until it's off screen. So about there, and you can see that the, the position is negative six, four, eight. Let's go ahead. We know that this road segment is five units long. So let's go ahead and make that a round number to that five unit place. So if we're starting at a negative two, let's go ahead and go to a negative seven, which is five. So the length of that road segment. So let's do a negative seven as what the number that we want to go. Okay, the speed that we wanna go here is in the Z axis. And we want to go towards the player or towards the user, which is in a negative Z axis. So let's go ahead and just try that real quick. This is what we wanna happen. We want this to move this way. And you can see that's a negative number. If I make this a variable, I can update that later if I want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up as movement. Let's just set it up as speed, okay? And then in the variables, so you can see it created a speed variable of a float type. Let's go ahead and just set that up to be negative three. And we can change that if we need to. Okay, so let's go back. Let's give this a test real quick. So we can see that, so we can see that our road is moving in the right direction. Now the problem is that this thing is just gonna continually move and move and move. So what we want to do is once it reaches a certain point, we want it to stop and then we wanna reset the position of it. Okay, so here, let's do this. We're gonna do what's called a float switch. So we'll do a float switch. And what this does is it'll, it checks the position of the game object. Once it reaches a certain position or greater, then it's going to call a transition and then we can use that second state to reset the position. Okay, so we're gonna do a float variable and that's the Z position because we're continually checking what the Z position is. And we definitely want to make sure that we're checking it every frame. So if the Z position is at, let's see, a negative seven. So once it's off the screen, once it reaches negative seven, 
So we'll go, if it's less than negative seven, then we're gonna go ahead and reset the position. So let's create a new event and we're going to call reset position. And we don't have that transition set up, so let's go ahead and add that. And we're gonna make sure that this is checked every frame because we wanna continually check to see if it reaches negative seven. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to a new state and let's go ahead and label that state reset position. All right, so what is it we wanna do? We wanna reset the float, the Z position of this game object. Okay, so let's go and set position and of the owner, so that's the road segment itself, we're gonna reset the position and let's make this be a positive. So our starting position is negative two and the, the depth of it is five. So if we go negative two plus five, that is three. Let's say we go another five, that's eight. Reset the position to be eight. Okay, and we don't need to check this every frame. We're only calling this once. And then we also need to add a finish transition to then go back to the beginning, okay? So then it's gonna continually move. It's going to check when it reaches that negative seven, then it's going to hit reset position, which is going to move it back further. And then it's going to continually move towards us. So let's go ahead and give this a test real quick. So it moves once it reaches negative seven, boom, it resets its position and then it just continually moves. And it's gonna create this nice little cycle. Okay, so we only have one road segment, so we should go ahead and create a couple others. So I can use this and create more segments. And for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it. And then it has all the actions still applied to it. So I know that this is five units deep. So I wanna set the position of this to be three, okay? And then I have this um, resetting to a position of eight. So I need one more segment. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that one more time. And I'm gonna move this to a position of Z of the eight because that's where we're starting that start position. So let's go ahead and give this a test. So now we should have a nice continual loop of road. Now I'd wanna make this a lot longer, but this gets us what we need to. And you can see that this works. So I now have a road that's continually uh, being generated based off these three segments. Now you can see that I'm getting just a little bit of a gap and so what I need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the front face of these and make just the front face just a little bit longer just to accommodate for the, the update of the road piece itself because there might be little gaps in time. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this and make this just a little bit longer and that should compensate for any of those little errors that we might have in the road segment movement. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this again to see if that works. Boom, and there we go. We've got a nice looping segment of road. Hey again, another great tutorial, and hopefully you can use this demo in one of your games in the future. And as always, please share, and don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time, peace.